Sometimes the apple doesn't fall far from the drug lord tree. Ivan Guzman. On top of wealth demonstrating photos of gold-plated weapons, exotic animals, flashy cars, and numerous scantily clad women, Guzman's social media accounts have also provided brazen bragging of the riches and post-prison escape freedom of his infamous father, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. That is, until Daddy was recently recaptured, at which point Guzman set out to use a social media platform to threaten the Mexican government. Alfredo Guzman. The more defiant Ivan seems to be stepping into the kingpin role in light of his father's imprisonment, but younger brother Alfredo doesn't seem to lack in either brash arrogance or bold outrage. Alfredo has been known to boast of his many cars, and the description of his purported Twitter profile even translates to roughly read, here you find me, commoners. More recently, much like his brother, he's taken to social media to voice his palatable anger over his father's arrest. He recently tweeted, I can be a saint if you're dealing fairly with me, but otherwise I'm poison and the government will soon know about the Guzmans. Serafin Zambada Just as El Chapo formed a close partnership with Ismael El Meo Zambada, the Sinaloa Federation Cartel and the Sons of the Two Drug Lords have also forged friendships. Both Ivan and Alfredo are tight with Serafin Zambada the probable successor to his father's federation. Like the Guzman boys, he isn't shy about showcasing his exorbitant wealth in the form of cars, guns, and other toys. Unlike the Guzmans, Serafin made no attempts to blur out or even obscure his face in posted pictures. This carelessness proved costly when he was nabbed by the DEA on November 20th while trying to cross the border from Sonora into Arizona. Vincente Zambada Nibla Another son of El Mayo, the self-serving Vincente Zambada Nibla, who was arrested on drug trafficking charges and extradited to the United States in 2010, argued in court that he shouldn't be imprisoned because he was willing to be a rat. Not only did he claim that he's covered by an immunity deal between Mexico and the U.S. based on information shared by the Sinola cartel about rival gangs, but his lawyers even claim that he cannot be prosecuting the states for his role as a secret DEA informant, even as he smuggled billions in cocaine and heroin into the country. Joaquin Guzman Self-anointed as El Chino Anthrax, Joaquin Guzman has adopted the flashy braggadocio of his older half-brothers, albeit without the aggressive threats against government officials. Instead, the eldest child of El Chapo's second wife, Griselda, seems content to share snapshots of a lavish lifestyle that includes partying with Paris Hilton, extravagant clubbing, and the possession of high-powered firearms, and, you know, a pet tiger. However, Guzman's prized possession seems to be his gold-plated, diamond-encrusted handgun, a device he's taken along to the movies and other public spaces. Giselle Guzman On the female side of El Chapo's Guzman clan, Alejandra Giselle Guzman comes by her fiery, defiant personality naturally. Although often shown to look glamorous in photos posted on social media sites, the 34-year-old pulls no punches in her empathic support of her family drug business. To over 50,000 Twitter followers, she proudly connects herself to the Guzman heritage, with tweets like, I'm beautiful because of my mother. She told her 40,000 followers, intelligent because of my father, and a murderer because of me. She hasn't actually been linked to any known murderers, but with this family, you never know. Melissa Plancart. Selfie-loving, aspiring pop singer Melissa Plancar is trying to forge a rather unique and controversial path to music stardom by linking her name to her father's crime syndicate. Melissa's father, Enrique Plancar, was one of Mexico's most wanted men and a leader of the Knights Templar drug cartel before being killed in a gunfight in early 2014. Weeks before her father's death and during a civil war which pitted Plancard's group against federal and state police, Melissa stirred controversy by posting a selfie while wearing a dress adorned with Knights Templar insignia. Enrique Plancard Jr. Rare enough is the drug lord who sires one aspiring pop star, but Enrique Plancart wound up with two musical hopefuls among his kin. Melissa's brother Enrique Jr. also hasn't been shy about letting his notorious roots be known, even dedicating his song, Pa Mi Viejo, For My Old Man, to his father. Both Plancart siblings sparked a scandal in 2012 when they performed at a music festival that was sponsored by the same state government of Michoacan that their dad was at war with. Francine Lucas Sinclair for a girl whose dad crippled an entire New York borough as a cocaine and heroin trafficker, Francine Lucas Sinclair enjoyed a blissfully naive and privileged upbringing. As a toddler, she owned a Fendi fur coat, $10,000 FAO Schwartz train set, and a cache of stuffed animals stuffed with cash. As her father, Frank Lucas, went to work as the drug kingpin of Harlem, he simply told her that he was 
in the candy business. In January 1975, Francine was three when she witnessed federal agents breaking into the family house to arrest her dad in front of her. She emerged from the shadows to tell her story ahead of the 2007 release of American Gangster, the Denzel Washington film that depicted Frank's criminal life. Sebastian Marroquin El Chapo's name may dominate present-day headlines, but the most infamous drug lord of all time remains Pablo Escobar. With his father once ranked number seven on the Forbes list of the world's richest men, it's no surprise that his son Sebastian Marroquin, who changed his name from Juan Pablo Escobar, experienced a rather different childhood. Marroquin recalls a sprawling childhood estate with his own private zoo, once featuring exotic animals such as elephants. While this may be a dream come true for some kids, he also remembers living in an environment of fear, witnessing his father threaten to kill employees for taking drugs in front of him. Marroquin recounted these memories in his autobiography, Pablo Escobar, My Father, which became a bestseller in Latin America. We hope you enjoyed this video. While you're here, please don't forget to click like and subscribe, and check out these other videos for something else you might enjoy. Thanks!